Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about parasites and when to do a cleanse, when, when the best time to do a cleanse is, and why, why to do a cleanse around this time. So we've got a full moon coming up on the 15th or 16th, depending on where it is that you are in the world. Um, and I'd like to explain why it is beneficial to do a parasite cleanse around a full moon. So our bodies go through some cyclical changes with um, the full moon, new moon cycle. And around a full moon, <clears throat> our bodies produce less melatonin, which is a neuro neurotransmitter responsible for um, aiding in restful sleep. And uh, it also helps with your immune system. So that's melatonin. And then serotonin is your feel-good neurotransmitter. Um, it regulates mood and um, it helps with uh, a, a good healthy production of serotonin helps uh, with anxiety and depression. And, you know, it's, it's the feel-good um, mood neurotransmitter. So what happens around a full moon is that your melatonin production decreases and your serotonin production increases. And this is why sometimes people have insomnia issues or feelings of angst or anxiety or depression around a full moon. Um, because even though serotonin is the feel good emotion, a spike, a sudden spike can cause um, anxiety and, and depression. So that's why sometimes we feel off around a full moon and why we um, can't sleep very well. So that's what happens in our bodies. Parasites love serotonin. They love it. In fact, I've read that a large grouping of parasites in your body can actually create thought and almost like give you cravings for certain foods that cause a spike in your serotonin so they can gobble it up. So around a full moon, they're more active because they're consuming the serotonin. They also come out of their protective shells. Like they have these really difficult to penetrate shells. It's almost like a, a little microbiome around themselves. Well, they come out of their shells around a full moon to breed. So since they're active and they're out of their shells, it makes them very susceptible to parasite treatment. And I, the very first time I did a parasite cleanse around a full moon, I started a full week before the full moon and I went for a full week afterwards. Now I just start um, a couple of days, two or three days before the full moon and go two or three days after. Um, there's different things that you can use during a parasite cleanse. Um, I'm not going to name everything that I've tried. I really uh, encourage you guys to do your own research, figure out what is best for you. Only you know your body. I don't know your body. Um, I can list some of the ones that I've tried. The very first one I did was chlorine dioxide, chlorine dioxide. It is not bleach. <sighs> please do your research. Please, please, please do your research. I'm not a medical professional. I don't have a license. I'm not going to give you medical advice. You need to find what is best for you and do your research, do thorough research. If you're going to do something like chlorine dioxide, um, you have to do microdosing and there's a very, very specific protocol that you have to follow. So please look that information up. Please use safety. Safety is number one. Don't overdo it. Microdosing is extremely important when you're using something like chlorine dioxide. Um, other things you can use, um, anti-parasite medications. Um, there are umpteen different supplements out there and supplement blends that you can use during a parasite cleanse. Um, it, it's just a matter of doing the research and figuring out what you feel would be best for your body and trying different things. Um, what's... <laughs> What's interesting is that most parasites um, would live in our intestines as an adult and parasites go through different stages from the egg to the adult. But because we're exposed to so many pollutants, 
these parasites can infect our bodies in the different stages before becoming an adult. And that can cause all kinds of issues. Um, I was reading in a book, and I'm gonna reference this book. I'll, I'll list the name um, of the book and the author in the description box, but it's called The Cure for All Diseases. And it's by a doctor named Hulda Reger. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Clark, so Hulda Reger Clark. And she's a PhD and an ND. Um, she talks about parasites and pollution in this book called The Cure for All Diseases. And with parasitic worms, it's, they break down into two categories, flatworms and roundworms. And then they break down further um, after that into tapeworms, flukes, threadworms, pinworms, hookworms, et cetera. Um, so like what I was saying, normally, we would only be infected with a parasite in our intestines as the parasite is an adult. Um, hey buddy, can you please go out? Thank you. You know, no matter how many times I tell the kids, I'm gonna do a quick video. Can you please stay out of my office? They never listen, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, um, so she's saying, and now we've got kitties. Anyway, whatever. Okay, so in this book, she talks about um, the worst parasite. Now I might murder this name. So, um, <laughs> William, can you please close the door? I'm doing a video and I asked you to stay out. Get the kitty and go in the back, please. Close the door. Thank you very much. It's called Fasciolopsis buscai. It, it's a fluke or a flatworm. And in her patients, she said that she found in every case of cancer, HIV infection, Alzheimer's, Crohn's disease, Kaposi's, endometriosis, and in many people without these diseases, she found this particular parasite, the Fasciolopsis buscai. And she goes on to explain that normally that fluke is the, is the largest intestinal fluke found in human beings. However, it's been infecting other organs besides the intestines because of the pollutants that we're exposed to. So I'm just gonna um, just real quickly go through some of these. So if you have propyl alcohol, which is a solvent, the intestinal fluke is invited to another organ as a secondary host. This organ become, well, can become cancerous. If benzene is the sol solvent, the intestinal fluke uses the thymus for its secondary host, setting the stage for AIDS. If wood alcohol is in your body, it invites the pancreatic flukes to use the pancreas as a secondary host. Um, this leads to pancreatic dysfunction, which we call diabetes. Um, if it's xylene or toluene uh, is the solvent, then she saw a lot of flukes in the brain as a secondary host. Um, methyl ethyl ketone or methyl butyl ketone are the solvents, then the uterus becomes the secondary host and endometriosis is the issue. So I just list these things just to give you guys an idea that parasite infection isn't limited to our intestines. And a lot of times these mystery diseases are just a combination of a parasite infection and, and um, solvents or pollutants or mycotoxins or chemical toxin, toxicity in your body from what we're exposed to in the air, on our clothes, in our food, in our water, in our environment in general. Um, Okay, so I've explained why to do it around a full moon, what happens with them, um, some of the different ones. What else did I wanna talk about? I don't know, I'm drawing a complete blank. <laughs> anyway, there's still a few days before the full moon. Um, so, you know, you might be able to uh, get something to try for this, this full moon. If not, um, there's a full moon every month. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, so yeah, I, I really encourage you all to uh, look into parasites and parasite cleanse cleanses and the different things that you can use to do that. Um, and also maybe start paying attention to the products that you use, your household cleaning supplies, your laundry soap, your makeup, your um, just stuff that you use on a daily basis. You know, read the ingredients. Do they have solvents in them? Do they have um, other chemicals in them like formaldehyde? You know, these kinds of things combined with parasites cause mystery diseases. So there you have it. Happy full moon in a few days, guys. Bye.